So in our last video, we talked about subsidence and uplift or isostatic adjustments and now how they happen in the crust of the Earth. And we started talking about how these things deform the Earth. Now, before we actually give you examples of this happening, I would like to clarify there are three different scenarios in which deformations will occur. They will occur if the magma intensity changes. In other words, if the magma becomes hotter or in a hot spot or a magma plume or something like that, you're going to get uplift, of course. And the magma becomes cooler or the opposite happens, you're going to get subsidence. The same thing is true if the weight of the crust changes, and that's kind of like what we focused on the last video. If you were to say because of erosion or weathering, we move weight from the crust, then you're going to have uh, uplift taking place. And if you have weight being added to the crust or no, things like deposition, then you're going to have subsidence taking place. And like we also referred to in the other video, if you compress or stretch the crust in tectonic plate motion, that's also going to be causing changes in the density and therefore changes in the uplift and subsidence. Usually because of compression, you're going to be increasing the amount of stuff in the same amount of space. And so therefore, that's going to usually create subsidence. Uh, well, it creates uplift in mountains, but subsidence underneath, and that's where you get those roots. And when you have the opposite during tension, you're going to have the stretching thin of the crust, and so therefore it will look like the top is subsiding, but also the bottom or the roots are going to be uplifting. And so that's kind of how the review that of what you need to know. Remember, magma intensity, the weight of the crust, or tectonic motion will actually cause isostatic adjustments. And the only complicated one is the tectonic motion one, where where you, the one you see in the, in the screen, for example. Every place in the Earth where the continents have collided with other continents or with larger blocks of, of land or with oceanic crust or anything like that, collision events where compression stress is added to the crust is going to make the crust fold upwards, right? But that means that it's adding weight to the same amount of space or compressing the crust. And when that happens, you're going to be increasing the density and therefore creating subsidence underneath it. So... Imagine it's almost like you're folding the rock with both upwards and downwards at the same time. And so all of these places around the world where you have mountains are examples of tectonic motion creating uh, uplifted mountains and, and subsiding, which also subside and root, are rooted downwards, right? As we talked about in the previous video, all right? Uh, another example of something like this, in this particular example, it could be because, of, for example, magma cooling, there was a subsidence event where the magma cooled down and therefore it sunk underneath it. The opposite you see on the bottom right where a dome mountain formed because the magma underneath it got angrier and, or hotter and pushed the, the land upwards. And you see the opposite happening. So you see how changes in the magma intensity could also change the surface of the crust. Now, of course, the other example is when the weight of the crust changes. Say, for example, 6,000 years ago during the Ice Age, the entire northern end of North America was covered with a large glacier. That glacier has now has been receded because of the world warmed up, and we have what we call the Hudson Bay. Now, the Hudson Bay up there in northern northern is actually higher than it was before you see because when you took the weight of that glacier away you you basically made the the crust less dense and so what happened uplift but as you can see this actually happened the as you go from florida towards the hudson bay you see that you go higher and higher because this whole thing got uplifted and this process is still continuing and still happening and how can we prove that this happened if you actually look at the shoreline of the Hudson Bay and you see how the beach is over here you can see that as you move backwards you see evidence of previous beaches that used to be there and you see how the whole thing got uplifted so you see that the sea level seemed to have fallen but not really it's actually the whole Hudson Bay has risen and so the sea level pretty much stayed the same while the, the bay was actually rising. And that's why you have these contour lines of the ocean there. All right, so this is an example of how when you change the weight, you're going to change that, the, the, the uplift or subsidence. So, for example, when you add a glacier, in other words, when you have a process called glaciation, that means that you're going to add more weight to the same amount of space so the cross will subside. Right, but and this will especially be the case if the mantle underneath it is low viscosity. That means it's not very flowy on the, in this particular region. That means you, the whole crust will kind of crack, and the weight of the ice will push down only that section. But if the mantle is a little more viscous, all right, what's going to happen? Uh, as the crust subsides and pushes underneath it, it's actually going to push the, the mantle to the side as well, 
which is going to cause uplift of the regions surrounding it. And so you see that the, the way the weight of the glacier changes also can also change depending on the viscosity of the mantle. All right? But after the ice melts over a long period of time, what's going to happen? You're going to have the opposite happen. You're going to have uplift or what was previously subsided, and you're going to have, have a flat, flat ground. But if the opposite happened on the, on the where the mantle was more, more fluid, you're going to have the uplift of the middle and the subsidence of the sides. You see how this, these two things are acting together, uplift and subsidence to change the shape of the earth for a long period of time, and the rocks in these regions are going to be under tension, right? And you see that these rocks on this side here were folded, while the rocks on this side here cracked. And you see this all happened because of the difference in the viscosity of the mantle. So but you see how uplift and subsidence are going to be changing the surface of the earth and causing folds and cracks, which we'll talk about in the next, vi next video section. Now in this picture, we're seeing more examples of subsidence and uplift, but and there's two things we can discuss here. First, how does the sea level change over periods of time? Of course, there's two things, the ways that the you know, sea level can change. The first way is if the glacier melts, for example, that that water will actually eventually run down the rivers and end up in the ocean, which will cause the sea level to go higher over time. And that's what you see on the left side. The sea level could also change if more sediments are added to the bottom of the ocean. That means that the, 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 the ocean basin will become shallower and the water level will also rise because you have the same amount of stuff, but the volume of the bottom of the ocean change and therefore that's going to push the water higher because of the sediments that's underneath it now. And so you see how the sea level can change both because of deposition of sediments and because of glaciation uh, or the melting of glaciers. And both things are actually happening right now a lot. More sediments are being added to the oceans and the glaciers are melting, so that's causing the sea level to rise over time. Now, ironically, as more weight is added to the, to the ocean basins, either by water or sediments, what's going to happen? That's actually going to cause the, 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 the water to subside, right? And while the contents are going to be uplifted, because there's less weight on the continent since the sediments and the glaciers that were sitting on it left. And so that means that afterwards, the actual continents will rise and the water level will sink because there's going to be subsidence on the ocean and uplift on the continents. So, so that's why it takes a while for the sea, water, sea level to change, you see, because the processes which are causing the, the sea level to actually take over the continents are the same processes which will actually cause the sea level to fall because of subsidence and uplift. You see, so that's actually very interesting. Now, throughout this video, then, we understand why the continental crust is so thick. It's, it can't look like this because every time you have an increase in density because of a folding that creates a mountain or because a deposition created a new amount of mass in the same amount of space, you're going to have to have a route for that as well because of the subsidence. So now you understand why the continental crust looked the way it does. But you can also use the very same mechanism of uplift and subsidence to understand why the oceanic crust looks the way it does. The hottest spot in the ocean is going to be the mid-ocean ridge where the magma plume is being pushing up, causing the uplift of that center region, which actually explains why water is typically slightly shallower in the mid-ocean ridge since it's, the whole seafloor is uplifted in that area. But as you move away from the mid-ocean ridge, the hot spot is going to be less and less, which is going to mean that the water is going to become deeper and deeper, right? And what's also happening to the crust itself is that it's actually the lithosphere is cooling more and more as it goes away from that region. And so magma right here in the middle can't really cool down. It can't cool down because the melting is constantly happening at the mid-ocean ridge, pushing through the crust and rifting it. But as you move away from that melting point, it's going to become colder and colder, allowing more and more of the lithosphere to cool down, which makes it thicker and thicker. All right? And as you cool down, it's actually getting denser and denser. And since it's getting denser and denser, it's going to subside more and more. Remember, the denser it is, the more it subsides. So that means that as you move away from the mid-ocean ridge and the temperature of the lithosphere is getting denser and denser, the lithosphere is sinking more and more into the, into the ground, into the mantle, and therefore it's getting thicker and thicker as it cools down more and more, right? The more you're away from the mid-ocean ridge, the more it can cool down, the thicker the layer is going to become, and the denser it is, the, the, the deeper it actually sinks, which explains why the mid-ocean ridge is higher up than the corners of the deep ocean basins. 
So you see how subsidence and uplift can actually explain the shape of the ocean floor as well. And it's actually interesting because as you as you move away from that mid-ocean ridge and the cooling and thickening is continues, eventually you're going to get to the point where the actual lithosphere is going to become denser than the asthenosphere, which is going to cause the lithosphere to sink un completely underneath the asthenosphere and subduct. And that's exactly what happens as the ocean hits the continents. It subducts because it's getting denser than the, lit than the, lit the asthenosphere is, and it actually subducts underneath it, and it starts to actually melt and change as it does so because it becomes hotter and hotter again. And so that explains the way the oceanic crust behaves. Now, you don't have to get that into too much detail, but it's another example of how subsidence and uplift uh, create the structures of the, of the Earth. All right? Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about how these subsidence and uplift and also tectonic plate motion is going to be deforming rock. And so I'll see you guys then.